Premier Li Keqiang, distinguished heads of state and government, excellencies, dear friends and members of the World Economic Forum, a very cordial welcome to all of you, and particularly to you, Your Excellency Li Keqiang, Premier of the People's Republic of China. For me, to stand here is a very special moment. It has now been 35 years since the first time I came to China. And during all these years, the World Economic Forum has developed a very special relationship, partnership, and friendship with this great country and its people. Thank you. The world has changed so much over the past 35 years. And China's leadership has consistently shown the wisdom, the determination, and the innovation required to master the challenges which it has faced. China has a significant influence in changing, in shaping the world of today. And it will continue to have a tremendous role to play in strengthening our collective global future. To capitalize on the great opportunities the future provides and to respond to the economic and social challenges we face today, courageous and comprehensive reforms are needed. Those necessary deep reform transformation processes require collaborative efforts of governments, business, and other actors of society to be truly successful. This is the reason we are all here gathered in this hall in Tianjin at the eighth annual meeting of the new champions. Eight is a particularly lucky number in China. And we are fortunate to welcome the largest number of participants ever, over 2,000 inclusive the media representatives. And we are representing here over 90 countries and all stakeholders of society. Mr. Premier, in your opening speech last year, you said, and I quote, China will encourage, will continue to encourage foreign companies to make investments and to do business in China. Looking at all of you gathered here in this room, I can only say, Mr. Premier, you have been heard. With over 1,000 business leaders from outside China, this highlights the confidence in your country and its continued attractiveness for foreign business. We have chosen as a theme for this eighth annual meeting of the new champions, creating value through innovation. The innovation, capacity, and entrepreneurial spirit assembled in this room here is rather unique. Mr. Premier, last year, in your opening speech, you also quoted an ancient Chinese saying, a gentleman is always ready to help others to attain their goals. This means that we are here as members of a multi-stakeholder community committed truly to improve the state of China and to improve the state of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Li Keqiang, Premier of the People's Republic of China.
Dear Professor Klaus Schwab, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it gives me great pleasure to meet you here in Tianjin, China at the 8th annual meeting of the new champions or the Summit Davos Forum. Here on behalf of the Chinese government, I wish to extend warm congratulations on the opening of the forum and accord you welcome to all of you who have come from afar. The theme for this year's forum namely creating value through innovation, is a most relevant one. Innovation is an eternal topic of the human society and an inexhaustible engine driving economic and social development. Innovation is vital to the steady recovery of the world economy. Innovation is also essential to upgrading the Chinese economy and improving its performance. And it is thanks to reform and innovation that the Chinese economy has in recent years maintained steady and sound growth and continue to move towards a sound direction. Since the beginning of this year, the global economic environment has remained an intricate one. The road to recovery in developed countries has remained bumpy. Growth in emerging market economies has slowed down and the Chinese economy faces greater downward pressure. We have continued to follow the general principle of making progress while maintaining stability. We have stayed the course and pursued a proactive approach Instead of adopting strong economic stimulus or easing monetary policy, we have vigorously promoted reform and economic adjustment, improved people's livelihood. As a result, we have maintained a steady economic performance. In the first half of the year, the Chinese economy registered a 7.4% growth, and CPI rise was kept at 2.3%. Despite economic slowdown between January and August, unemployment was kept at around 5% in 31 big and medium-sized cities. More than 9.7 million urban jobs were created, which is over 100,000 more compared with the same period last year. Indeed, we have seen growing downward pressure in the Chinese economy, however, more jobs were created, thanks to new steps of reform taken. Since the beginning of this government, we have advanced the reform of the administrative review and approval system. Government departments have removed or delegated to lower levels administrative approval on over 600 items, and this year, the business registration reform has been carried out nationwide. This has lowered the threshold for starting businesses and removed restrictions on them, thus giving a great boost to business development in the whole country. Between January and August, the amount of newly registered businesses was more than 8 million. And from March to August, with the business registration reform, the number grew by 61% over the previous year all pointing to a massive upsurge, which has generated over one million jobs. So in addition to reforms on business registration systems, we have also introduced reforms to investment financing, taxation, and the logistics systems, and further opened the gate for the development of the services sector and other emerging industries. All these measures have been vital in fostering and increasing job opportunities. 
The positive changes in China's economy are not only reflected in the increase of jobs and the residents' incomes, but also in the structural upgrading. We have streamlined administration, delegated powers to the lower levels, and adopted measures such as targeted tax reduction and a targeted reduction of required bank reserve ratio. All these measures have spurred the growth of the services sector, agriculture, rural areas, and the welfare of farmers, as well as small and micro businesses, private business, and emerging businesses. In the first half of this year, new businesses and new business models such as e-commerce and logistics and express delivery all developed fast. The number of newly registered service businesses surged by more than 70%. The tertiary industry continued to outperform the secondary industry in terms of growth rate and share of GDP and continued to be a leading sector of the economy. The share of private investment in fixed asset investment increased by 1.4 percentage points year on year. High tech industries and equipment manufacturing grew faster than the industrial average. Deepening structural readjustment has improved the quality of economic growth. On the basis of carrying out reform and innovation, we have reduced overcapacity and fostered new growth areas. We have promoted business merger and reorganization and redoubled efforts to conserve energy and cut emission. By doing so, we have promoted business upgrading and transformation. In the first half of the year, the growth of investment and the production of industries with high energy consumption and emissions noticeably slowed down. The per unit GDP energy consumption dropped by 4.2% year on year, and the carbon intensity was cut by about, two, five, about 5% for the first half of the year, the largest drop in many years. We have managed to ensure steady growth and improve the quality of the Chinese economy by taking targeted, range-based macro-control measures. With focus on key areas and weak links of China's economic and social development, we have used more reform and innovation measures to incentivize market entities, strengthen weak links, boost the real economy, and ensure that our efforts are well targeted. This approach, which was also structural adjustment in nature, involved both reform and readjustments. We have strived to make sure that the market play a decisive role in resources allocation. We have also endeavored to improve the role of the government and promote social equity. We have balanced domestic and international demands, coordinated regional development, narrowed the gap between rural and urban areas, and stabilized agricultural supply and demand. We have also strengthened the construction of railways in central and western China, the renovation of round down areas, pollution control and prevention, other livelihood development projects. All these means efforts to tackle the bottlenecks that have long constrained China's development. These have greatly supported our efforts to advance toward a new type of urbanization and increased the supply of public goods. Facing the new normal state of the global and Chinese economy, we have remained level-headed and taken steps to tackle deep-seated challenges. We focused more on structural readjustment and other long-term problems and refrained from being distracted by this slight short-term fluctuations of individual indicators. For example, in July and August, electricity consumption, freight volumes, and other indicators fluctuated somewhat. That was inevitable and within our expectation. It was because the domestic and international economic situation was still complex and volatile, and the base figure for the later half of last year was high. So when observing the Chinese economy, one should not just focus on its short-term performance or the performance of a particular sector. Rather, one should look at the overall trend, the bigger picture, and the total score. Judging by the principle of range-based macro control, we believe the actual economic growth rate is within the proper range, even if it is slightly higher or lower than the 7.5% target. In particular, we should realize that an important goal of maintaining stable growth is to ensure employment.
And as the economic aggregate continues to expand, particularly with the rapid growth of the services sector, growth will mean more jobs and there will be greater tolerance to fluctuations. We should also be clear that the Chinese economy is highly resilient and has much potential and ample space to grow. And the measures we have taken are good both for now and for longer term interests and will therefore enable us to prevent major fluctuations and make a hard landing even less possible. We do not mean that we are not going to face any difficulties and challenges. Instead, these challenges and difficulties will be daunting. In the four months ahead, we will coordinate the efforts to stabilize growth, promote reform, readjust the structure, improve people's livelihood, and prevent risks. We will continue to improve and innovate in the thinking and approaches of microcontrol, strengthen targeted microcontrol on the basis of range-based microcontrol, promote structural reform and readjustment, carry out reforms in key areas of systemic importance with every determination to forge ahead and bear long-term interests in mind when addressing current problems. First, we will continue to press ahead with revolutionizing the government itself and further intensify efforts to streamline administration and delegate powers. We will deepen fiscal and taxation reform, promote the reform of the budgetary and management system so that public funds could be used in an effective and equitable manner. We will also standardize the transfer payment system and continue to expand the pilot programs for business tax to VAT reform, which will support the development of services sector, in particular the R&D industries. We'll deepen financial reform, promote pilot programs for non-state-owned banks, sort out and standardize limited requirements on access to financial sector and develop a multi-tiered capital market. We'll deepen reform state-owned enterprises, we'll deepen price reform and improve the pricing mechanisms for energy product, medicine and medical services. We'll deepen reform of the investment system and implement government purchase of service contracting public-private cooperation models and franchise operation system. Second, we will continue to focus on tackling the deep-seated structural problem, further increase effective supply of public goods to generate effective demand, strengthen weaknesses in investment, increase household consumption, and nurture new growth areas. Third, we will continue to ensure efficient use of both the existing and the increase of fiscal and financial resources, and further scale up support for the real economy and emerging industries and businesses for the greater benefit of rural areas, agriculture, farmers, as well as micro-businesses and services sector. These efforts are aimed at turning the gains of reform into new dynamism of development that would bring more benefit to the people. We have the confidence, ability and the resources to overcome various difficulties on the road ahead and realize the major goals of our economic and social development in 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, China is, is still a developing country. We must give top priority to economic development. Only development will deliver progress. Ultimately, it is only development that will resolve all the problems in China. We cannot advance without changing the growth model, nor can we advance without adequate development. Of course, the development we pursue should be one that promotes employment, increases incomes, improves economic performances, and boosts energy conservation and environmental protection. It should also be scientific development, namely sound and balanced development, that is in keeping with the laws governing economic activities, social and development and nature. Now there are many destabilizing and uncertain factors in the global economy. And China's economic development also faces an array of overlapping and deep-seated problems. So it is 
a crucial stage where its path upward is particularly steep. In the later half of the year and beyond, we will further accelerate the transformation of the development model, push forward structural readjustment through structural reform, make good use of the golden key of innovation and promote institutional innovation, as well as innovation in science and technology, which will be two main endeavors. By doing so, we will be able to maintain a medium-high growth rate, move towards medium-high level of development, and create more value and upgrade the Chinese economy. We will accelerate institutional innovation. Innovation has been the ultimate cause of the leapfrog development of the Chinese economy as innovation involves not only technology, but also institution, management, and growth models. China's reform and opening up over the past three decades and more has in itself been a huge innovation drive. And the tremendous untapped potential of innovation and development in the future also lies in institutional reform. Just imagine how big a force it could be when a working population of eight to 900 million out of the 1.3 billion total all become enthusiastic about entrepreneurship, innovation, and creation. I believe that the key to realizing that is to further liberate our mind, liberate and develop productivity, energize the market, and increase social vitality and creativity, and remove all institutional obstacles so that everyone who is ready for entrepreneurship will be given more space for it, and that the blood of innovation could flow unhampered in a society where everyone is full of the spirit of self-development. When reform and innovation feels a massive wave of entrepreneurship by the people and at the grassroots level on the land of 9.6 million square kilometers, the enormous power of the diligent and resourceful Chinese people will be fully unlocked, and the engine driving China's sustained economic development will constantly regenerate itself and remain powerful. China's effort to comprehensively deepen reform is an ongoing process. The government is taking the lead in conducting a self-targeted revolution. Just like an arrow shot, there is no turning back. We will deepen the reform in the administrative approval system, and we hope to uh, complete the task of removing and delegating items subject to government approval, originally planned for five years in a shorter period of time. This is to unleash market potential and the driving force for development. If streamlining administration and delegating power is like taking a proactive move in a chess game, then introducing new systems is like a zero blast. On the one hand, we should provide a full list of government powers which defines the scope of what the government should do. Items not found on the list will be deemed not permissible. Only in this way can we prevent the abuse of government power, reduce rent-seeking, and better serve the people. On the other hand, a negative list should be formulated, which defines areas of limits to businesses. Items not found on this list will be deemed permissible. Only by doing so can we build open and transparent systemic arrangements with stable expectations. 
and bring about enterprise vitality to the fullest extent. Moreover, we should formulate a list of government responsibilities to define how the government should regulate the market. All items on the list should be fulfilled by the government. Only by doing so can we build a market environment that favors honest operations and fair play, energizes businesses and encourages innovation and creativity. The government should enhance ongoing and ex post oversight and perform its role well, both as a referee of the market order and as a guardian of reform and innovation. As a saying goes, only by weeding out the barnyard grass can rice grow properly. Being lenient to lawbreakers is tantamount to doing wrong to law-abiding people. It could even result in bad money driving out the good. We will mete out stringent punishment to companies, domestic or foreign, that are involved in producing counterfeit and shoddy goods, engaging in fraud and deception, and stealing trade secrets. Protecting intellectual property is, in fact, protecting the kindling of innovation and creativity, as well as the rights and interests of innovators. We will penalize serious IP infringement to the full extent of law, including by imposing heavy fines, so as to make lawbreakers pay unsufferable prices and boost innovation. In addition, we will step up science and technology innovation. The Chinese economy is now among the largest in the world, but in many sectors China still ranks fairly low and its traditional extensive way of seeking growth has been prove, proved unsustainable. Readjusting the structure must be driven more than ever by progress in science and technology, and that requires strategic, strate uh, structural and innovative readjustment. We will support and provide guarantee to some sectors while curbing and scaling back others cultivate and promote new products and business models, and speed up the development of services, high-tech, and emerging sectors. At the same time, we will eliminate overcapacity, accelerate the transformation of traditional sectors, outdate, uh, phase out outdated capacity, and build global product and service value chains. so that innovation can create higher value added. To that end, we must invest more in human capital and increase the ranks of high caliber workers. We will improve the technological sophistication, quality and brand awareness of Chinese industries. In particular, we need to step up reforms to remove restraints on innovation by individuals and companies. And we will give them necessary facilitation and support, vocational training and educational chances. Yesterday marks the Festival of Teachers Educational development in China is the foundation of any advances in science and technology. We have hundreds of millions of professionals and skilled workers among China's working population. Combined, they represent 200 million. So when all these people can, or the majority of them, at least, can have the chance to put their talents to full use. Then, 
the Chinese people with this talent of industriousness and resourcefulness. If we can put their talents to good use, then we can foster a new pattern of innovation by the people and innovation by all, supported by the massive physical and intellectual power of the people and the strength of China's manufacturing and creative capability. We can even develop advanced or even revolutionary technologies. In this way, we will be able to create greater value in China's economy and move China's development to a higher level. China faces uneven development between its urban and rural areas and among its different regions, but such a big disparity can entail a huge potential. Promoting a people-centered new type of urbanization will it in itself be the biggest structural readjustment. We will seize opportunities brought by technological advances and global industrial revolution to speed up the development of such schemes as broadband China and smart cities, leverage the role of cities across the country in galvanizing hinterland development, promote urban-rural integration and a gradient development of different regions, and bring about a synchronized progress of industrialization, IT application, new type of urbanization, and agricultural modernization. At the same time, we will vigorously develop programs related to people's well-being, promote equal access to basic public services, and enhance household consumption, and step up social safety net. In this way, we will protect those who have failed in their entrepreneurship and give them more chances in their endeavors that will follow. The Chinese economy now heading toward further growth is being weighed down by increasing resources and environmental constraints. It is imperative for us to enhance energy conservation and environmental protection. Tackling climate change is not only our binding international obligation, as a major responsible country, but also the pressing need for our own development. So this is in China's fundamental interests. We need to promote ecological development and develop green industries. We have declared war on pollution. And we have earnestly fulfilled our due international responsibilities. We are studying action targets on greenhouse gas emissions control including the peak of CO2 emission, carbon emission intensity reduction, and the increase in the share of non-fossil energy by 2030 and beyond. We have the resolve and the capability to pursue green, circular, and low-carbon development. We will keep focusing on scientific and technological innovation, and we will make hard and unremitting efforts, step up environmental management, boost the development of energy conservation and environment protection sectors, fulfill the task of energy conservation and emissions reduction, and work with all other countries to tackle climate change, and we will take concrete steps in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in an era defined by deepening economic globalization, with countries increasingly depending on one another and interests and sharing their destinies closely. The world needs China, and China needs the world. China's endeavor to realize the two centenary goals and the Chinese dream about the great renewal of the Chinese nation will present great development opportunities and a huge market to the world. Instead of I win, you lose, or a zero-sum game, we need win-win or all win, which ensures mutual benefit. Only in this way can the world prosper and advance forward. China is resolute in following the path of peaceful development. 
China is a defender and a builder of the existing international system. China is dedicated to maintaining an overall environment of peace and stability. We call for observance of basic norms governing international relations, and we believe that regional conflicts and hotspot issues should be solved peacefully and politically through dialogue. We stand ready to deepen cooperation with our Asian neighbors, handle differences properly, and maintain the overall environment of good neighborliness and friendship, as well as the order of peace. We advocate the building of an open, fair, and integrated global market. We support the establishment of both multilateral and bi bilateral free trade arrangements. In order to build a high standard FTA network that is globally oriented, we oppose protectionism in all its forms and we oppose trade war. We will continue to pursue a more proactive strategy of opening up and improve the open economic system. We will focus on stabilizing export and actively expanding import. We will move faster to bring greater openness in the services sector as well as China's areas bordering other countries and its vast central and western regions. We will keep our foreign investment policies stable and make it even more open. We will improve and standardize business environment in order to attract more foreign businesses and investment and draw upon and adopt the advanced technologies, mature managerial expertise and fine cultural achievements of other countries. China will always be a major country that is committed to learning from others and will always remain open and inclusiveness. In light of China's national conditions, we will work hard and turn China into a major innovative country. As the Chinese saying goes, great vision that makes a country prosper is but the result of collective wisdom. So that means that wisdom comes from the general mass. A moment earlier, I said entrepreneurship and innovation by all the people will spark great development. And today, more than any other time, we need reform and innovation and the sharing of the result of reform and, and innovation. To use a Chinese idiom, when all the people come to collect firework, the flame will burn high. So I hope that all our distinguished participants will speak your minds, jointly explore ways for reform, innovation and open development, share your views on how to create value and achieve mutual develop benefit and do even more to help China's economic development and world prosperity and progress. Let us work together and make our due contribution. So let me conclude by wishing the summer Davos a complete success. And I wish all of you a successful forum and very good health. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency Premier Li. You have given us a comprehensive analysis of China's situation today, of its roadmap for the future, 
And particularly also your commitment was appreciated to be a constructive architect of our joint global future. I think I was particularly impressed um, by the innovative spirit which was behind your speech. And having here the new champions and being the meeting, the annual meeting of the new champions, uh, Mr. Premier, may I say that you are also, after your speech, the Premier of the new champions. I have some questions uh, following up your speech. You stressed very much the importance of innovation. In order to achieve innovation, you have to encourage and promote um, investments into research and development. And you have to do so uh, creating a plain level field for foreign and local uh, companies. What uh, measures and what policy support will you give in order to increase research and investment, particularly in private and state-owned companies? Thank you very much, Mr. President. In your speech, you explained the current situation of China and also explained the future of China. I 中国致力于与世界各国一道，为世界的共同未来打造建设性框架的这种态度，在您的演讲中特别强调了创新的精神。今天我们相聚在新领军者年会，听了您的演讲，我觉得我们也可以把您叫做是一位新领军者。我想借今天的机会向您提几个问题。首先，您在演讲中特别强调创新的重要性。我们都知道，要推动创新的发展，就要鼓励和增加对于研发活动的投入。要做到这一点，就需要为中外企业打造一个公平的创新环境。我想请问，中国政府打算采取什么措施，来鼓励中外企业能够加大对于研发领域的投入？中国政府将为国有和私营部门的企业加大研发的投入和创新投入提供什么政策支持？啊，首先感谢你在提问之前给我加了一个新领军者的头衔，我呃也想把这个啊、呃、头衔加给你，加给在场的所有各位。First of all, Professor, I want to express my appreciation to you for giving me a new title as a new champion before I take on your question. I believe that you, Mr. Professor, and all the people represented here also deserve this title as new champions. Innovation 要推动创新，我想在以下几个方面要加大力度。Innovation is the source of dynamism for boosting development. The business community represents as the primary entity in making innovations. To boost innovation in China, I believe the Chinese government needs to take strong efforts in the following areas. 首先。还是要给企业创新松绑，也就是说，要营造一个宽松的创新环境。政府继续要加大减震放权的力度。正像我刚才在演讲中所说，如果我们能够鼓励具有世界。几乎是最庞大劳动大军中的相当一部分人，或者是大部分人，勇于去创业的话，在激烈的市场竞争中，必然会激发他创新。同时，政府呢可以
，腾出更多的精力，来营造一个开放、透明、公平竞争的市场，这就会使各类的企业，包括跨国公司的在华企业，加大对创新的投入，因为只有创新。才能够引领市场，才能够得到消费者的青睐。First, the government needs to continue to ease all restrictions facing the companies in making innovations. In other words, the government must create a relaxed atmosphere for the business community to embrace full innovation. In this regard, the government will continue to streamline administration and delegate powers. As I said in my speech just now, if we will be able to unlock the potential of uh, the largest labor force that China has in the world in making innovations, I believe that their potential will be fully unleashed as they participate in the market competition. We believe in this way, the government will also have more space and energy to focus its efforts on building an open and transparent market and ensure a level playing field for all types of companies, including those foreign invested enterprises operating in China, to scale up their input in R&D activities. Because it is only with innovation that those companies will be able to stay at the forefront of the market and always have the, uh, always keep them attractive to all the customers. 第二，就是政府要给创新助力。政府的公共财政可以说是取之于民，用之于民，而推动创新。实际上，有利于企业、就业者增加收入，也有利于企业有能力去加大研发的投入。我们现在正在推进的营业税改增值税的改革。其政策取向就是给服务业，特别是研发企业减税，让他们有更多的力量去投入研发。我们还要发展像创投基金、风险投资。创业、创新保险等新兴的业态来支持创新。Second, the government needs to give further boost to all the innovation activities. The public financial resources come from the people and must be used wisely in the interest of people's welfare. We believe in boosting innovation by the government. There will be an increase in the income of uh, corporate employees, and in turn, that will also encourage the companies to have more resources channeled into their R&D activities. Take our reform for replacing business tax with uh, VAT as an example. The purpose of this reform endeavor is to ease the corporate tax burden for. All those companies engaged in the service sector and companies with a strong R&D capability, we hope that in this way they will have more resources to put into their R&D activities. At the same time, we will also continue to enhance enhance venture capital development and introduce those policy uh, insurance. Um, products related to science and technology advancement to encourage innovation by all. 中国政府推动呃营改增的改革，在很大程度上还是为了发展研发企业。坦率的跟大家报个账，我们已经减税了。
两千，此一项改革我们已经减税了两千五百亿人民币，我们现在的财政收入增幅在放缓，在这种情况下，掏出这笔钱来，实不实属不易啊，但是为了创新，值得。The major goal of the Chinese government reform of uh, business tax being replaced by the value-added tax is to encourage the development of all those companies with a strong R&D capability. I can be honest with you, this reform endeavor alone has eased the corporate tax burden by as much as 250 billion RMB yuan. As you may know that the growth of Chinese government's revenues is slowing down, but even so, we are determined to press ahead with this reform, although it is not an easy thing. But to boost uh, innovation, we believe it's fully worthwhile. The third 是激发创新的热情。我们对侵犯知识产权的案件的处理，将一定会依法进行。要让创新者感到，创新是有价值的，是不能允许被别人非法窃取。Thirdly, the government will enhance the protection of intellectual property. As I said in my speech just now, the protection of intellectual property is to protect the kindling of innovation, and it will also stimulate the enthusiasm of innovation. We will ensure that all cases involving IP infringement will be dealt with in strict accordance with the law, and this way, we will assure those innovators they will feel that the value of their innovation activities will be fully protected and respected, and that the theft of intellectual property will be strictly dealt with. I believe innovation is an eternal subject for human society and we are prepared to introduce a lot more steps and policies in this field. Uh, in the interest of time, it would be impossible for me to lift them all one by one, but if you are uh, interested, Professor, maybe I can share with you more ideas when we meet here uh, again. Mr. Premier, may I have one or two other questions? Uh, the first one uh, related to financial reform. Uh, so your government has announced um, that you are planning to achieve interest rate liberalization within two years. What impact will this have on uh, the financial sector? And how will the Chinese government regulate and supervise the financial industry in order to make sure that the real economy benefits from the financial industry. Tony, if you can, I would like to ask one question. The first question is related to the financial reforms of the Chinese government. I noticed that the Chinese government has already announced that it will be possible to achieve a market liberalization within two years. I would like to ask, what kind of impact will this have on the financial sector? 中国政府将采取什么措施来对金融行业进行监管，以确保实体经济可以从金融业的发展中获益？呃，近年来啊，我们可以说有序的推进金融改革。呃，资金的价格已经大多数市场化了。去年我们采取了一个。重大的措施就是放开贷款利率的管制，使其市场化。今年我们又。
推进了汇率形成体制的改革，市场间人民币对美元汇率的浮动空间扩大了。这两步棋看似容易，却艰辛啊！实际上，它不仅涉及中国经济的全局，而且涉及。几乎所有的企业和储户，中国推动利率、汇率的市场化，必然给金融机构和监管部门都带来了挑战。它需要监管部门提高水平，同时也。需要金融机构进行改革，在竞争当中提高服务实体经济的水平。In recent years, we have steadily advanced China's financial reform. Now, money prices in China are being determined by the market in the majority of cases. Last year, we took a major step forward in this direction. That is, we lifted the restrictions regarding the bank's lending rates. And now the lending rates are determined by the market. This year, we have pressed ahead with the reform of RMB exchange rate, and uh, we have widened the band for the um, flotation of uh, the RMB against the US dollar. They may seem easy steps, but the truth is they are very difficult steps for the government to take because these steps have impact on the overall state of the Chinese economy and they have also impacted the businesses and uh, the depositors. But we will continue to forge ahead with uh, the reform of exchange rate and uh, interest rate to make them uh, market-based. This naturally will pose a challenge to financial institutions as well as the regulatory authorities. This requires that financial institutions need to pursue reform and enhance their ability in providing services to uh, serve the real economy in the course of competition. And it also requires the regulatory authorities to enhance their capabilities. Next, 推进汇率的市场化，完善人民币汇率的形成机制，而且还要啊大力的发展多层次的资本市场，提高直接融资和股权融资的比例，这也有利于啊企业。降低杠杆率，而且我们还会啊推动人民币逐步走向国际化，使金融业更加开放，在一个开放的大市场中来增强金融业的竞争力和抗风险的能力。In the future, we will press ahead with the reform of making exchange rates and uh, market rates uh, and uh, interest rates market-based. And uh, we will continue to improve the RMB exchange rate formation mechanism. And we will also take strong steps to establish a multi-tiered capital market and raise the proportion of direct financing, particular equity-backed financing. Uh, and that will also help the companies to cut their leverage ratio. At the same time, we will press ahead with the internationalization of uh, renminbi, and uh, we want to further open up China's financial industry to enable the financial sector to further enhance its competitiveness in an open market to enhance its capability to contribute to the growth of the real economy. 刚才
，施瓦夫先生特别讲到，金融业如何为实体经济服务。我觉得其中很重要的一条，就是要为中小企业服务。我刚才特别提到的，大众创业需要有为中小企业服务的金融机构和业务。所以我们在今年会继续加大，让民间。发起设立中小银行，让金融业更加具有啊竞争当中提高服务水平的意识。Just now, you, Professor, asked me how can the financial industry contribute more to the growth of the real economy. I believe one important aspect is to enhance financial services for small and medium-sized companies. Just now, in my speech, I mentioned we need to encourage this trend of innovation by all in this society, and we need to ensure that there will be adequate financial businesses and services to serve such a need. So this year, we are going to take steps to encourage those eligible private investors to establish small and medium-sized banks. We want to raise the awareness of the entire financial industry to enhance their service capabilities in the course of competition. We将加快推进建立存款保险制度，来完善抗风险的体系建设，加强对风险的监测和风险个案发生的处置能力，确保不发生去信系统性的金融风险。As for the enhancement of the regulatory capabilities, I believe that can only be achieved in the course of a further opening up. So we will uh, introduce at a faster pace an in a deposit insurance system this year, and we will further enhance our institution building to fend off risks. We will also enhance our capability in detecting and coping with uh, risks, and also ensure that we will be able to avert any regional or systemic financial risks. Thank you. Mr. Premier, you allow one last question. <laughs> last Fine. year, because last year when we, when we assembled, um, we spoke a lot about the Shanghai pilot free trade zone. It's now one year, nearly one year in operation. What is the experience, in your opinion, uh, made with this free trade zone, and what are the implications for China's overall reform process? If we can, Mr. President, I would like to ask the last question. I remember when we had the meeting last year, a hot topic was the construction of the Shanghai Zimao 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 你很了解中国的文化。中国的老子说啊，一生三三生万物，三在中国是个大词儿，也是个完整的词儿。你今天设计问三个问题，也使我们这个会议啊，预示着将有圆满的成果，也会给上海自贸区建设的发展带来福音。Professor, I think you, you are really well versed in Chinese culture uh, because according to an ancient Chinese philosopher by the name Lao Tzu, one generates three and three will be able to bring us a lot more. And so three is a big and a wholesome number in the Chinese culture. Uh, you have been asking three questions here at the opening session, so I believe this in itself 
shows that uh, there will be a very fruitful conclusion of our meeting this year, and I'm sure that also augurs well for the development of the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. 刚才鼓掌的一定是来自上海自贸区的，也可能是管理者，也可能是已经注册的企业的人员。Well, I think those in the audience who have just applauded for what I said、uh, must have come from the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone,、uh, be it from the management staff or the businesses registered there. 据我所知，上海自贸区自成立以来，增加企业已经翻了一番。Well, as far as I know, that the number of companies registered there has actually、uh, doubled since the founding of this zone. We are in Shanghai doing a business in the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. We can say that it is a reform of the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. It is mainly focused on two aspects. The first aspect is how to handle the 政府和市场的关系。第二个方面是如何处理发展和开放的关系。To establish this、uh, Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, we want to、uh, make it a high land for reform. It is not a low land for policy.、Um, mainly, we want to take experimental steps in two areas. Uh, to explore two kinds of relationships. One is how to handle the relationship between the government and the market, and the other is the handling of the relationship between development and opening up. First, 在上海自贸区建立的负面清单，比去年刚刚开始设立的负面清单已经大大缩小了。我们希望有更广阔的空间，让企业去创造、创新，也就是说为他们松绑。那么同时呢，政府要拿出权力和责任清单。来保证这个市场竞争是讲信用的，是公平的，是合理的。About the handling of relations between the government and the market, we want to introduce a management model based on a negative list in the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone. And the 2014 edition of this negative list introduced there has been significantly shortened compared with the 2013 version of the negative list. That means the government wants to ease all the restrictions and free up broader space for companies to make innovation and be creative. At the same time, the government also needs to formulate for itself a list of responsibilities and powers to ensure that there will be a level playing field for all companies. In dealing with the development and expansion of 更多的开放，要向内外的企业一视同仁的开放，使我们的市场通过放宽准入，有更大的企业创造的空间和更加公平、合理竞争的。范围，这有利于中国的发展，也有利于消费者。它本身也表明着中国对各类企业一视同仁，这是公平的。希望更多的外资进入中国，中国的大门是越来越开的。
about the handling of relationship between development and opening up, we are experimenting with a management model based on both pre-establishment of national treatment and a negative list. We want to open up further to foreign investment. And this opening up is equal to both domestic and foreign investors. By easing market access restrictions, we hope that the companies will feel that there is a broader space for them to do their own businesses and that there will be a envir an environment that encourages a fair competition. That is good for China's own development and for all the consumers. I want to emphasize here that all types of enterprises will be treated as equals while China continues to welcome foreign investment into China, and the door of opening up of China will open even wider. We have defined the time frame to determine the development of the to 你的提问可以说，再一次提醒我，我和其他的有关人员应该到自贸区、上海自贸区去进行深入的再调研了。We have set for ourselves a timetable that is by the one-year anniversary of the founding of the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, it is high time for us to make a review of the experience gained from this experimental endeavor to see that what can be the experience that can be disseminated and introduced to wider areas across the country on a step-by-step -step basis. Your question actually reminds me, Mr. Professor, um, that it is now time for me and my colleagues to visit the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone and check the progress there. Mr. Premier, I will, I will follow um, Chinese wisdom and not ask you a false question. <laughs> but I would like to thank you on behalf of all the participants for this uh, very clear, very comprehensive presentation of uh, China's uh, policies. I think you have encouraged us all to look at China not only as a new champion, but as a great potential, as a country which certainly will continue to grow fast, as a country which will play a major constructive responsible and responsive role in world geopolitics and world geoeconomics. And we would like to wish you all the very best in the implementation of all those policies. And I would like to add a special thanks for the patience with which you have answered my questions. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our opening session. Thank you.